AVC has it going. Right, okay. A very quick video, just something I've been thinking about over the last week or so. Um, I had a conversation with Rob Walker, let the music play, obviously, um, VC channel. Um, and yeah, and we're talking about this album. This is uh, Paul Weller's True Meanings album. It came out, I think, last year. Um, yeah, so I was basically saying how much I like the record. It's very different to what Weller normally does. It's very laid back, more of an acoustic feel. Um, it's the sort of album that you listen to it through in its entirety. Um, you're not necessarily going to cherry pick tunes from it. Whereas I was chatting to Robert Batten, he was saying he didn't like the record. Um, and jokingly said, you know, Weller's now hit 60. Um, you know, he's done, he's past it. So we had a laugh about that. But it got me thinking about albums that have been made by uh, artists at age 60 or over. Now, I'm only looking at soul, funk, um, pop, rock artists, not thinking about jazz or classical or film soundtracks, purely because those genres don't really... Um, age isn't necessarily an issue for those genres, but rock and roll is pretty much considered a young person's game. So, yeah, I just thought um, it's got me listening to records by, by artists uh, that they're made in the later stages of their career. So... So first up, this is Charles Bradley. Um, this is an album called No Time For Dreaming on Daptone Records. I think it came out in 2012, 2013, something like that. So this is this is very different to the other albums I'm going to show because this is his debut album. I think he was, um, I don't know, 63 years old, something like that, when this album was recorded. Um, he'd been involved in music for a long time, well, for decades. He'd been... Um, performing as a James Brown tribute artist, going under the name Black Velvet, performing all around New York City. And he'd approached uh, Daptone Records, obviously a great um, New York label, um, looking to get a record deal. He'd approached him on a few occasions. And every time the guys at Daptone, Daptone had gone back, basically saying, you know, you've got to find your own voice. You can't just keep doing the, the same James Brown thing. And that's definitely what he's done with this record. He's, he's got that big, obviously full on soul voice, but uh, yeah, he's got a real cry in his voice. You think about Otis Redding and uh, just what made, made up Otis Redding mean so much, basically. You believe what he was saying. It's the same with, uh, it's the same with Charles Bradley. He made three albums before he died, um, all of which are worth uh, picking up. They're all great records. There's a fourth that came out um, after his death, which is like a, a, just of a, a compilation of odds and sods, really. But those three albums that he made during his lifetime, definitely worth checking out. And I think this is my favorite of the three, so very cool. <laughs> Dr. John, uh, Lockdown. This is an album that came out, I think about five, six years ago now, um, produced by Dan Auerbach out of the Black Keys, and it certainly has that Black Keys type production sound, as you'd expect. It's not Dr. John's best record, but what I like about it is some of the the, the subjects of, of some of the songs, you know. So, for example, there's a song on here called My Children, My Angels, and it's basically Dr. John just really looking at the fact that you know he's a man at this stage in his late 70s with a young family and just really acknowledging the fact that he's, he's not going to see his children grow up. Um, it's quite an unusual subject matter for a pop song but um, yeah and it gives it it just gives it a, a, a different feel. I really like this record for that reason but um, yeah not his best but certainly worth checking out. Right I'll quickly show a CD actually this is uh, Solomon Burke with Don't Give Up On Me Now. Solomon Burke, obviously a big man with a very big voice. Um, this was sort of billed as a comeback for him. In reality, he hadn't gone away. He'd, he'd, he'd still been recording, but uh, just with not a great deal of, uh, of success around record sales. But this album came out and uh, it had a lot of celebrity backing. So you've got songs on here specifically written for the record by Alfred Costello, Bob Dylan, Nick Lowe, Van Morrison, Tom Waits, Brian Wilson. Yeah, so... This is a really nice record produced by Joe Henry. Um, 
It's a real blue soul record, but it's quite understated that the production isn't intrusive, um, and you just let um, Solomon Burke's voice just just you know just take the record away basically. So. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend this if you don't know it. Something I go back to quite a lot. Really nice record. Right then, Bob Dylan and Modern Times. Now, you think about the 1980s and early 90s. Um, There's a period that wasn't particularly kind to Dylan. Um, I don't know if it's the production sound or the production techniques. He just didn't really suit his voice or his songwriting. Um, he did obviously make an absolutely classic album during that period, which was um, Oh Mercy, which I think came in 89. But apart from that, it's a very patchy period. But he did get his second wind in the late 90s. So starting off with um, Time Out of Mind, then Love and Theft, which I think he was uh, in his early 60s at that point when he recorded Love and Theft. This is the third uh, album in that run. This is Modern Times. And I think he was probably in his late 60s by the time this one came out. This is my favorite of, of, of that run of albums. Um, Excellent songwriting, as you'd expect from Dylan, but the production suits the music. You know, it's, it's very understated. Again, um, it really just pushes the song to the fore, which is what you want from a Dylan album. This is the the Dylan album that I go back to. Well, certainly in in, in the last few years, it's the album that I've gone back to most of. Is so, uh, yeah, definitely recommend that one. Right, some more CDs actually. Um, I'm going to show one of these, but I've been going over the um, Johnny Cash. Uh, American recordings um, albums that he made with Rick Rubin uh, throughout the well throughout the 90s and early 2000s, but to his death. Um, my favourite of which is probably American Recordings 4, The Man Comes Around. Now, I think that Rick Rubin is as important to these records as Johnny Cash, purely because he knew exactly what to do with Johnny, you know, so um, whether it be the musicians that you brought in to play on the records, so you've got the likes of Tom Pitt and the Heartbreakers playing on, on one of the albums, Joe Strummer appears for a period, but it also as well the choice of music, so you've got a mixture of cash originals, um, but also traditional songs and contemporary songs as well, so you've got songs by the likes of Nine Inch Nails in the way of Hurt, which is probably one of the most famous from this period, but also Soundgarden, um, Rusty Cage, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I love these records, and I think you know, I'm, not, I'm not alone in saying that. There's such a wealth of material here. I think prior to his death, certainly after his wife died, after June died, I think he was pretty much recording a song a day, all of which have come out over recent years, and all sound great. It's a real, it's a real document to that time, so lovely stuff. Okay, I've got to show some records by um, maybe Staples. The records that she's made with Jeff Tweedy out of Wilco um, over the last sort of 10, 15 years are some of my favorite records. So uh, this is one of them. This is um, If All I Was Was Black. This is just from a few years ago now. Um, she's certainly my favorite female singer, one of my favorite vocalists ever. Um, obviously famous for being in the staple singers, all those wonderful records in the in the 60s and 70s. She did have a bit of a lull in the 80s and 90s. I don't think anybody really knew what to do with her voice. She recorded with Prince, but even some of that stuff didn't really suit her voice. But Jeff Tweedy has got it absolutely bang on. Um, she's got that lovely bluesy raps to her voice. But again, it comes down to the strength of the material. All songs on this record are written by Jeff Tweedy, and these songs are just tailored for Mavis. Absolutely fantastic, so I'd definitely recommend checking out any of those records. If all I was was black A 
another sort of gospel record. This is Candy Staten and His Hands. This is from the mid 2000s on Honest John's records now. Candy Staten, I think, can sing anything. So you think about those late 60s, early 70s, Southern Soul sides that she recorded, um, stuff like I'm Just a Prisoner for Your Good, Good Loving. Um, she then went into the late 70s and it was that real disco sound. Um, you know, obviously, Young Hearts Run Free, that sort of stuff. And we get to this point, these are straight gospel records. Um, I saw her a few years ago actually, um, she's nearly 80 now and she's still got a wonderful voice. But these are worth checking out. I think she recorded a couple for Honest John's, but I think this is my favourite. So, uh, yep, lovely stuff. And just finally, a record that came out a couple of years ago. I think I said at the time this was my album of the year that year. This is Peter Perrett with How the West Was Won. Now, Peter Perrett was in the band The Only Ones in the late 70s, early 80s. They recorded three or four records. And then he just disappeared for years. He had health problems, um, drug issues, etc. But this album is something that he's recorded with his two sons. And again, this is all about the songwriting. Really focused, direct songs, um, just great pop songs, basically. I'd recommend this to anybody. I don't think it sold particularly well, but um, it should have done, you know. So, anyway, there you go. It started out to be kind of hope, but the dream of living quickly turned into a joke. The Indians and Mexicans were the first to feel the road The blade, the gallon, wagon trace came rattling Murdered buffalo, block cattling Storm clouds were gathering That's how the West was won It's how the West was won At the point 